custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud said that the whole of humanity was confronted with a dire test against the coronavirus pandemic with the advent of the holy fasting month of Ramadan. King Salman said it pains Muslims to mark Ramadan while being unable to perform mass prayers or nighttime taraweeh prayers due to the preventive measures of the coronavirus. King Salman hoped that the holy month will bring with it the recovery of every ill patient and permanent peace for all humans. France condemned Iran's launch of a military satellite into orbit, saying it violated a UN Security Council resolution. France also calls on Iran to immediately cease all activity related to the development of ballistic missiles designed to be capable of carrying nuclear weapons. Earlier, US President Donald Trump threatened to shoot down and destroy an Iranian gunboat that harass Navy ships. The European Union issued a warning against the incoming Israeli government's intention to annex part of the occupied West Bank, saying that such a move would constitute a serious violation of international law. The EU's foreign policy chief, Joseph Borrell, said the 27-member bloc does not recognize Israeli sovereignty over the Palestinian territory and that it will continue to closely monitor the situation and its broader implications and will act accordingly. The deal stipulates that any Israeli action would need U.S. backing and must take into account Israel's peace treaties with neighboring Jordan and Egypt. The EU's diplomat chief Joseph Borrell has said that the war in Libya right on Europe's doorstep directly affects EU interests. Borrell regretted the situation in Tripoli after the Libyan National Army of Khalifa Haftar launched an offensive last year to take over the Libyan capital from militias backing the government of the National Accord led by Faiz Siraj. He stated that fighting in Libya is fueled by weapons and other military reinforcements coming from abroad in direct violation of the UN-imposed embargo. A Palestinian university unveiled a homemade ventilator as West Bank hospitals brace for a potential wave of coronavirus patients. The device was released by Al Quds University on the outskirts of Jerusalem a day after being certified for use in Palestinian hospitals. With the West Bank alone home to some 2.7 million people, far more machines will likely be needed if the major COVID-19 outbreak takes hold. Two alleged former Syrian intelligence officers went on trial in Germany accused of crimes against humanity in the first court case worldwide of a state-sponsored torture by Syrian President Regime. Prized suspect Enwar Raslan, an alleged former colonel in Syrian state security, stands accused of carrying out crimes against humanity while in charge of the Al Khatib detention center in Damascus. Like hundreds of thousands of other Syrians, the two men fled their country and applied for asylum in Germany, where they were arrested in February of 2019. Dubai will allow shopping malls to partially open and cafes and restaurants to resume operations during limited hours with a maximum capacity of 30%. Restaurants will be able to operate but will not be allowed to serve shisha or buffets, according to a statement released on Thursday. Shopping malls will be able to operate partially from 12 p.m. until 10 p.m. Iran will destroy U.S. warships if its security is threatened in the Gulf, the head of Iran's elite revolutionary guards told State TV on Thursday, a day after U.S. President Donald Trump planned Tehran over harassment of U.S. vessels. Trump said he had instructed the U.S. Navy to fire on any Iranian ships that harass it at sea, but said later he was not changing the military's rules of engagement. 
Earlier this month, the U.S. military said 11 Revolutionary Guards naval vessels from the Guards Navy came close to U.S. Navy and Coast Guard ships in the Gulf, calling the moves dangerous and provocative. Iran's foreign ministry spokesperson Abbas Mousavi said Iran has summoned the Swiss ambassador in Tehran, who represents U.S. interests in the country over recent Gulf tensions. The ambassador was given a message to pass on the United States that Iran will strongly defend its maritime rights in the Gulf and respond to any threats. Tensions between Iran and the United States have escalated anew since 2018, when Trump withdrew from Tehran's 2015 nuclear deal with six world powers and reimposed crippling sanctions. According to U.S. officials, more evidence is emerging that far more New Yorkers have had the coronavirus than the number confirmed by lab tests. A state survey of around 3,000 people found that 13.9% had antibodies suggesting they had been exposed to the virus. In New York City, 21% of the people tested had antibodies. Experts also say having antibodies is not necessarily proof someone is immune from the virus. UN Special Envoy to Yemen Martin Griffiths said Yemeni parties cannot continue fighting each other while also combating the spread of the coronavirus global pandemic at the same time, urging all sides that only joint efforts will ensure Yemen has a chance. Since the ceasefire was announced, the Iranian-packed Houthi militia has not accepted the coalition ceasefire announcement, and violence has continued in several provinces, including Merib and in other provinces. Griffiths has said that the United Nations is aiming to have a mechanism in place to ensure that the ceasefire could continue under their supervision, especially in hotspot areas such as the strategic port city of Hudaydah. Investors should not be fooled by the recent buoyancy of stock markets and should immediately move their money into cash and ultra-safe bonds, a leading global banker went. The global economy is forecast to go into the biggest recession in nearly a century, with no firm predictions a recovery. While governments have responded with unprecedented wave of printing money and stimulus spending, retail investors' industry parallels for an individual investor were burnt earlier this week by the historic drop of U.S. oil prices in negative, and this dynamic may play out again. The International Civil Aviation Organization said the coronavirus pandemic could mean 1.2 billion fewer airline passengers worldwide by September. Airline capacity could also be significantly slashed, it said, resulting in a drop in airline revenues in the first nine months of the year by as much as 160 to 253 billion US dollars. The projections are direr than the ICAO's initial estimate in February when the outbreak seemed to be mostly localized in China, where almost all of the first 1,400 COVID-19 deaths were recorded. The European Commission is considering a plan that would produce 2 trillion euros to finance the European economic recovery after the deep recession that the coronavirus pandemic is expected to cause this year. The note said both the EU's next long-term budget for 2021 through 2027 and a new fund called the Recovery Instrument would be used to kickstart growth. The note includes the Commission's proposals for an EU Leaders' Summit taking place later on Thursday. Officials warned the proposals included in the document could still change. The Muslim World League has launched emergency initiatives to help 16 countries, along with international organizations, deal with the coronavirus pandemic. 
The emergency plan is in line with measures taken by the UN, the World Health Organization, and governments of the benefiting countries. Public hospitals treating coronavirus cases will be equipped with intensive care beds, monitors, ventilators and oxygen cylinders, along with medical accessories. India has suspended the use of Chinese-supplied rapid testing kits for detecting the deadly coronavirus disease known as COVID-19 after several states complained results were inaccurate. The move marks a major setback for Indian government efforts to expand the country's screening capacity for the killer virus, as the number of reported cases swept past the more than 20,000 mark. Under India's National Health Insurance Scheme, only 500 million out of the country's 1.4 billion population are eligible to undergo lab testing for free, with others having to pay 4,500 rupees or around 59 US dollars. The queue for the food bank snacked for hundreds of meters out of the shuttered marketplace bordered by tower blocks and down the side of a four-lane highway on the outskirts of one of Europe's wealthiest cities. In Paris's depressed suburbs, the number of people relying on food handouts is soaring as a strict coronavirus lockdown plunges France into its deepest recession since World War II. Many worked the grey economy before the outbreak and now receive little protection from France's generous welfare state. Erme has weathered the global coronavirus crisis better than rivals, with a 7.7% decline in first quarter comparable sales, and the Birking handbag maker said that business was picking up strongly in China after shops reopened last month. The coronavirus crisis first hit China, a major market for luxury goods, late last year before spreading around the world, leading to lockdowns across Europe, including Italy and France, as well as the US. Hermé Chief Executive Axel Dumas said that the second quarter would be hit hard by the health emergency, given that 75% of the group stores are still shot. According to new research in France, nicotine could protect people from contracting the coronavirus, where further trials are planned to test whether the substance could be used to prevent or treat the deadly illness. The findings come after researchers at a top Paris hospital examined 343 coronavirus patients along with 139 people infected with the illness with milder symptoms. They found that a low number of them smoked compared to smoking rates of around 35% in France's general population. 